Do your storage rooms look dull and repetitive? Do you have rows of chests shoved into your attic because you have nowhere else to put them? Do you scroll through building ideas, only to find that all of them are just spruce, spruce everywhere? Well, today I'll be showing you three unique underground storage rooms, all of which can easily be built in survival. Level 1. I call it my AF cave. So this is the most basic of the storage rooms, and I use this for my iron farm. So this farm was built in a mangrove swamp, and the golems spawn on this little platform, and then they fall down this chute here. So I was thinking, since it's below a swamp, and it's kind of underground, it would be neat to have like a little cave hollowed out. So, I chose to make the walls like bright and colorful, first off because that's not something you really see that often, and also because it matches the iron farm itself. To make this room actually feel like an underwater cave, I made the ceiling out of slabs of cobblestone and tuff to make it look like it was actually chiseled pretty roughly out of the natural stone in the area. Now, I like to think that ambience is also an important part of the aesthetic of a room. So you can hear the chimes of the amethyst hidden in the floor as you walk over them, the screams of dying golems as they fall into your fire pit. It's all about what appeals to you. Now, when I make a particular room, I like to think about all the features I'm going to need. So of course we have our storage over here, which is where all the drops from the farm wind up. Now we have here what I like to call utility sections. So of course crafting is super important, and I used this when I was actually building this thing, and also for turning iron ingots into iron blocks, and then the stone cutter was pretty indispensable for making the ceiling. And then over here we have some extra storage for just random items that you would need, and then a smoker. That that gets automatically reloaded from this little barrel back here uh, just for whatever food you have to cook. All right, and down here is my favorite part. So whenever I have a farm and I'm AFK for a long time, I kind of feel like I'm wasting time by just like standing there and doing nothing. So at least for like simple farms, like an iron farm that aren't super like lag intensive, I like to have an AFK fishing setup. So this little chest here is actually for my fishing rod storage. And then I can just come over here. Oh go like that, do like the F3 plus T trick, and then I can sit here for hours and hours as the iron pours in and the fish roll into me. So there's a little storage down here for everything I have caught, so... AFK fishing is honestly so useful in like the early game when you have no food or like resources or anything. And I find like I can actually get like 60 plus like levels just from AFK fishing and it doesn't actually uh, deplete your hunger. So you can AFK fish for a very, very long time. Now this cat is the other best feature. So if I've been AFK and I come back and it's the middle of the night, I don't want to like go up when it's dark and there's monsters around. So you can unsit the cat and then sleep on the bed to make it daytime, and this cat should give you a gift. It gave me a string, good kitty. And now for level two, the tunnel behind the waterfall. So, after running out of space in my little tent here, which I was using as my starter base, hello llama, I decided to kind of hollow out a little tunnel here, and this is now my main storage. So I've got plenty of chests here for all the stuff that I could need, another section of chests here, and finally another one here. Now this is basically an expanded version of the iron farm, so you can see we've kept the same color scheme. We have the same chiseled look on the ceiling here, showing that it was carved out of this mountain. Now, I kind of criticized the use of excessive spruce in the intro, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with using it, but here, I think that the dark oak works so much better because it contrasts better with like the bright walls. See, whereas the spruce just kind of blends a little bit more. 
So I think these dark oak columns really add a lot to this build. We've also got utility sections for all of your crafting and upgrading needs. If all of these sections were just like rows of chests, it would indeed get very dull and very boring. So the utility sections are not only functional, they are the perfect way to add some interesting detail to a build. Now this thing here is actually my all-time favorite of the utility sections. So there are lots of reasons that you might need to smelt things, either as you're doing something with redstone or a build or whatever. So this is my super compact auto smelter. So up here is where you put the things that you want to smelt. And then back here is another row of barrels. And these will basically refill the fuel section of all of these furnaces here. So say that I wanted to smelt something, I could fill this chest up here and all of the items will go into the furnace and then as they are done they will filter through this hopper into this chest down here that is a barrel in terms of other fun features it can be helpful to keep yourself organized so this is my to-do list wall so you can see all of the projects that I plan to work on eventually and you can see all of the projects that I am currently doing and have finished the cats are judging me. Now, if you want a room to feel complete, it can be helpful to balance the colors that you use. So this section of the build is very bright and it's very pink. So I decided to make this part down here very green because green is actually a complementary color to pink and the cooler color helps kind of balance it as well as this section, which is made out of the darker mud block. So not only does it look like a nice wallpaper, it actually provides a good contrast to the warmer like upstairs section over here. And finally, for level 3. So this is a much larger and more refined version of the previous tunnel storage. So we've got these huge sections of chests in various spots for 102 double chests total, as well as a bunch of barrels. When you've got large sections of double chests like this, this is when things start getting really monotonous. And that's why it's important to kind of break up the sections of chests with little sections like this. Uh, so like our little utility sections here and over here. And notice we've kind of made it more or like less repetitive by having a section of things at the very top over here. And then over here, the section is kind of a little bit lower. And then notice how the, um, the slab is over here and then over here it's in the middle. So it's just like small things like that that work to make a build look more unique and interesting. Now I've done a lot in this room to kind of like break up the monotony. So one of the first things I've done is is like this line of barrels down here. So that's what I like to call an accent stripe. So even if you have a bunch of varied sections, just a bunch of double chests like this is just gonna look kind of dull on its own. But if you just add a little row of barrels at the bottom there, or even like through the middle like that, then instantly that section looks so much better and so much more interesting. I also added little accent stripes in the sections of of the front of the room over here and I think that just makes a plain sandstone wall look so much more interesting and colorful and accent stripes can be on the top as well like that little row of beeswax up there and on that note can I just say like I really love this arch design so I recently discovered how you can put two trap doors on top of each other like this and so you can make a much more like subtle archway instead of like the usual stair trap door arch like this and I just love this entryway so much Speaking of arches, another thing you can do to break up the monotony of like a straight room like this is to add a little archway here. So this archway kind of separates the kind of like 
antechamber, I guess you would call it, from like the main storage section of this build by coming out like this. And it's also made of a different type of wood than the main like dark oak that I'm using for the rest of the build. So this feels like a nice divider between the two sections. And I've also used a um, dark oak planks to help further divide this area and kind of mark that you're going into a different section of the build. Now, in terms of the flooring, I really love this um, kind of like crisscross pattern, and I think it looks especially nice when you use spruce. However, even an interesting floor pattern is going to look really dull if the entire floor is nothing but that pattern. So that's why I've kind of like sectioned it off with these lines of stripped dark oak and of course the dark oak planks. So that not only helps to like mark the different like sections of the build, it just makes it more interesting to look at. Now another thing here is like this carpet. So you can add some ambience to a build using the particle effect. So beneath here I have amethyst of course that will make noise when you walk on it. And then some inset lighting as well as some ender chests for that nice little particle effect. Now, in terms of like the utility of the build, I've tried to fit in as many blocks as you're gonna need when you're taking stuff out of your storage and like packing for whatever you're going to do. But something I added to this one that wasn't in the last one was like this little bone mealing station here. So it's pretty common to need like dyes or like flowers. So you can basically replace this thing up here with whatever too tall flower you like, and then you can get all your flowers flowers or your dyes. And of course, one of my favorite tricks is to put crafting tables right in the ground. So when you're taking stuff out of your chests and you need to like craft things for your build, then it's convenient to have your crafting table right there. Now, I kind of like the look of the crafting table in like the middle of the floor, but I do think it's more convenient when it's like right next to the chests, but I left both options in here like just to show just some different ideas. Well, I think that does it for the video today, folks. If you enjoyed the video and you think it deserves a rating, that would be much appreciated. If you want to see more Minecraft content and builds, like this little rainbow house thing behind me, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you! Bye!